Good morning, everybody. We're going to study the coordination chemistry of transition elements. That's one of the major aspects of the chemistry of the transition elements. These coordination compounds have a metal ion, like the most common ones are plus two and plus three. And uh, these were here are all plus two metal ions. This one is the cobalt two nitrate. It says hexahydrate. That means there's six water molecules and they're actually attached to the metal ion in an octahedral fashion. As you see in the experiment, you'll see a structure of it. And this one is nickel two nitrate. It's also the plus two state. It's got six water molecules attached. And the actual chemical name is this. Whenever a water molecule attached to a metal ion, it's called an aqua group. So this is hexa aqua cobalt two. It gives eyes to that color. And the counter ion, the nitrate ion, and this is hexa aqua uh, nickel two nitrate. And this one here is the co is a copper complex. In the solid state, you only have two water molecules attached, and the other water molecule is actually hydrogen bonded between the complex ion and the sulfate ion in the crystal structure. So this would be called tetra aqua copper two complex in there. And what I've done, I weighed out 0.3 grams of this, 0.30 grams of that, 0.28 grams of this. I'm going to put them into these test tubes over here. Hopefully, don't spill them. That's, that's the cobalt two one, and this is the nickel two. And this is the copper two. When it gets in the solution, there'll be two more water molecules will attach to the copper. Okay, now I'll add 10 milliliters of water to each. They're all soluble in water. Make pretty solutions. And the colors of those solutions are actually due to the complexes. And they're the counter ions, the nitrate and the sulfate ions are colorless, so they, it's the complex ions that are giving rise to the color. Let me stir these up just a little bit more. And then we're gonna do some experiments with these. This is already in solution, just about. This one is just about. And this was almost in solution. It'll be in solution in just a second. And that concludes the part one. Okay, these are all dissolved now. And what we're going to do the first experiment on the copper, I mean on the uh, cobalt two one. So I'll put these in the back temporarily. And then we'll put this over here in the corner. And then if you add hydrochloric acid to it, the chloride ions will replace the water molecules and you'll end up with a, a tetrahedral, these are octahedral complexes in here, you'll end up with a tetrahedral chloral complex. And the way you name that, it's a negative ion, this is the way you name it, tetrachloral cobaltate two. And uh, see if there's any evidence of that reaction occurring. I have hydrochloric acid is gonna be added now, and they're supposed to add several milliliters, one milliliter at a time. I already measure out a couple of milliliters, so let's add one milliliter. See if there's any evidence of reaction. Let me shake it up. Is there any? Doesn't that look a little different? Let's add another one. Okay, starting to get a little different, isn't it? Well, let's see. Let's go add some more. Let me measure these out. I'll do it as fast as I can. I'll just put two milliliters in this time, okay? You see any evidence of something happening? You did, didn't you? I'll put two milliliters at a time, make it easier and faster. See if you see any evidence. 
You see any blue developing? Yes. Okay, good. Add two more milliliters. See if you see any evidence of blue. Yep. It's just starting to turn blue. Now, red and blue together make purple, right? And we need to get all the water molecules out and get the tetrahedral complex. It'll be blue, I believe. You see it turning blue? Yep, it's now it's more blue in it. Let's add some more. Yeah, that's pretty blue now, isn't it? And notice it's more intensely colored, too. There's a reason for that. It has to do with the, removing the center of symmetry. If I have enough time, I'll tell you in class about that, why that is. That's pretty, isn't it? We have an, actually an equilibrium between the chloride ions and the water molecules. It's an equilibrium. And it's a fast equilibrium. You know that reaction is as fast as mixing. It's, it's, it occurs on mixing. It's a real fast reaction. Now if you have an equilibrium established, you have, let me write that on the blackboard. Here. You have a, let me write it on the blackboard. So this is what we had before. That's the formula of the octahedral cobalt complex that was a pink color. We added the chloride ions from the hydrochloric acid. It reacted to make the tetrachloral cobaltate 2 ion. And then you liberated the water molecules. And this equilibrium established. According to Lachatelet's principle, if you add water, you should shift the equilibrium in the opposite direction. Okay, so let me measure out a little bit of water in here, and I'll add it to see if there's any evidence that it shifts the direction, the opposite direction. Yeah, you see the top? <laughs> it already shifted the top, the top bottom more dense. That's pretty, isn't it? Let me stir this up a little bit, and you'll see. Isn't that something? Okay, I got a stopper. I'll turn this upside down and you'll see it equilibrate. See, it's almost all back to the pink now. We got enough water to make it go backwards. Yep. Let me illustrate the Chatelier's principle. Hello again. We're going to now substitute for the water molecules in the uh, nickel 2 complex with the water and the copper. We're going to use ethylene diamine. Have this structure here. And what happens? It can coordinate to the nitrogen atoms. It has a flexible ligand. The common name is ethylene diamine. The IUPAC name is 1,2-ethane diamine. And so one of these ligands can replace two of the water molecules. And so in the right up you're going to see that the formation constant, the equilibrium constant for forming the complexes. I guess I could write one out. Let's do one. So if you add one ethylene diamine, the abbreviation for this is EN. Is that all right with you? EN. It's easier to write it out that way. We place two of the water molecules. Sometimes you put brackets around the complexes. It's just to do that. That's a common way of doing it. And so this is going to still be 2 plus, and you can liberate two water molecules. That's an equilibrium process, too. And so an equilibrium constant for that is given in here. I think it's 3.3 times 10 to the 7th power. So it's a very large equilibrium constant. That means the amines coordinate more strongly than the water molecules do. So if I add, I think I've done the calculation. 
And if I add uh, one milliliter of 10% ethylene, this is what the ethylene diamine looks like. It's a colorless compound. It's in solution. It's soluble in water. That's a 10% solution. And I'm going to add one milliliter to the nickel and see if you see any evidence of reaction. Okay, this is the ethylene diamine solution and this should be enough to replace two water molecules out of each of those complexes. See if there's any evidence of reaction. Ready? See any evidence of reaction? No doubt about that, right? Isn't that pretty? Now, what I'm going to do is add, I think I should add another one, right? Because the formation constant for the second one is also large. So let me pour another milliliter in there and see if you see any evidence of reaction. Ready? Is it changing color? Yes, it is, right? Now let's add another one and see if it changes color. And that's going really, to be the third one. Changed a little bit, didn't it? Okay, it did change again. Now that's the third one on there now. And the way we draw this complex is like this. We use its abbreviations. We put the metal, up. let's see, I'll put it right over here. This would be the octahedral axes. See, these are coming out towards us and these are going away from us. And we and they have a nitrogen coordinated, indicated like that. And this is the linkage between the nitrogen atom, another one coordinated, another one coordinated here. What that does has the same symmetry as a th three-bladed propeller. And that's called tris ethylene diamine. When you have a complicated ligand like ethylene diamine, you don't use you use tris rather than tri. So we say tris ethylene diamine nickel two would be the way to have its name. Okay, I'm gonna do a trick here. This is the reaction of one ethylene diamine with copper. Ready? <laughs> That's cheating, isn't it? Same reaction occurs, except the metal ions are different. The colors are going to be different. Okay, so let me measure an ethylene diamine here. Why don't you take one milliliter and pour it in there? See if you see any evidence of color change. Any evidence of color change? Isn't that pretty? Yep. Let me add another one. It gets get a little bit of change, a little bit of change. Now I'm going to add another one, and there probably won't be any change except dilution. Because it turns out that the formation constant for the third one in copper is small compared to what it was in the case of the nickel. But that is a different color. It's, it's a purple color, right? And that concludes, concludes it, doesn't it?